the church is a 12th century building and it's one of only two churches in Cambridgeshire that has a thatched roof. The church is open every day. So there's a, a wonderful rota of um, key holders who come and open the church every day. There's a rota of people who come and clean the church. Um, and as you look around, you'll see that there are flowers. So the church is very well looked after. It's a small village, small rural, mainly in its character. About 400 and 440 people. Typically now, a little bit more of a dormitory for, for, for Cambridge. There's not a lot in the village. Um, there is a pub and obviously the, the church. It does have a very strong community. Um, so there is a village hall which is very well funded and looked after and, and has a lot of events. So the model came about because I guess um, around sort of 2015, 16, um, a decision was taken to look at the future of the church remaining a parish church or becoming a festival church because the numbers in the worship community had um, reduced to a significant level. Uh, I think on a Sunday morning, they were averaging five or six people and it was impossible to appoint church officers for there weren't church, church wardens. Uh, there wasn't a PCC as such. Um, and so during the uh, interregnum between 2016 and 2017 and 18, um, the decision was made by the Archdeacon um, for the church to become a festival church. But that was in consultation with the village. The Ramage Action Group was formed shortly um, after. Well, well, so I arrived in uh, uh, sort of October 2017, and over the next year, um, the, we progressed the plans for the church to become a festival church, and out of that, the Ramage Action Group was formed. There was an open meeting during the interregnum, so during 2016 and 17, there was an open meeting uh, the Archdeacon chaired, and then very much um, when I arrived, um, it was then a case of um, carrying through the plans that had been agreed at that open meeting. So the Rampton Action Group um, is a great um, committee uh, or group of people which is made up of church members as well as um, Rampton um, residents um, who have a passion for the church. Um, it's a subcommittee of the PCC, so it reports into the PCC and one of the church wardens is a member of um, the Rampton Action Group as a my director. The Rampton Action Group has actually energised quite a lot of support within the village. Um, you meet a lot of people who say, oh, I'm not religious, but uh, you know, I, I want the building to be looked after and so on. And, and somehow I think it's sort of enabled um, us, the small group that we are to really get on and, and be quite proactive in, in doing things. Apart from the obvious, the, the, the change in the regularity of the services, yeah. six, to, six to eight services in a year, focused around kind of big festival yeah. times. Plus also when there's a gap and there has, isn't a festival, then, then we'll, have a, we'll have a service. We have services at Easter, so there'll be a service on Good Friday, Easter Day. And then in the summertime, we usually have our hymns and hymns. We've got that coming up this Sunday, uh, a week Sunday. We have a harvest festival. And then often it's a choral even song again in the summer. It's good to use the building when it's, the, it's warm because um, it, it's a pretty cold building. It's difficult to heat. So we try and uh, have as many services as we can or use the church as much as we can during the summer months. So the, the service that brings in the most people throughout the year is, is Christmas Eve, is the midnight service. You typically get people who don't usually come to church. That, that is their service of the year that they would come to, part of their tradition of coming to church um, on Christmas Eve. And of the other services, there's a real mix of both um, folk from the village here in Mountain, but also um, villagers or, or church members at Cottenham. One of the positives that has come out of the church becoming a festival church is that Rampton is, I think, much better supported um, by the, the sister church in, in Cottenham. There's probably a core of about uh, seven or eight people who will always come to every service um, that the church um, holds here. We should also mention, I suppose, um, births, marriages and deaths, because you know, there are happy yeah. several weddings here this year and, and christenings. Um, yes, yeah, so we've, we've had, um, I think we've had two baptisms here this year. We've had a, a wonderful wedding. Um, and the church is, is remains open for funerals too. So the church is used by the village for those um, 
um, moments uh, when families come together, those occasional offices. The Ramsh Action Group hasn't done much fundraising, yeah. um, partly because uh, of COVID over the last two years, but also um, because the Friends of Rampton Church are the main fundraisers for the church. Um, I think we felt that if the Rampton Action Group were also fundraising, um, we don't necessarily need two bodies in the village who are, are both fundraising. Um, so we very much left it to the Friends. The Friends is a, um, obviously a residence of Rampton. It's been established for many, many years now. 30 I mean, years, I think. 30 plus years, yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a number of kind of key events throughout the year where they're, they're raising money, uh, which has all, always gone towards the church. This weekend, in fact, they're running crew teas at the church in the churchyard. That's always very, very well attended. So they're, they're a mixture of people who, who are sort of religious in, in their own way or, and, and those who are just there interested in, in the building or the history. They, they probably raise about two or three thousand pounds a year. Hmm. But all, all of that adds up. They're wanting us to, to obviously guide them as to how that money can be best, best be used going forwards. And it's our, it's our responsibility as a production action group um, and the PCC to apply for grants as well. Yeah. And that's not the responsibility of, of the Friends. And the focus initially has been on the fabric of the church and, and really kind of trying to get that right and get it into a stable position, which I think we're very close to doing that. And I think possibly it's now that we will turn our attention more towards like serious fundraising or, and, and or other activities that will uh, you know, enhance its, its position within the community. We look to the quinquennial review to, to really tell us what's, what needs to do. Um, it's in pretty good shape, actually. We replaced uh, the South Island window, which was in a poor, poor state of repair. In fact, it, it wasn't a replacement, it was more of a restoration. We went out to tender uh, and came up with a, a quote of right around the 30,000 mark. And that was where friends stood up and basically offered the lion's share of the money. So some of the money we got from um, a trust fund. A trust fund. Mm -hmm. Um, but the bulk came from the friends. That was a, a hugely successful um, project. It's all done. It, it, it's a real asset to the church. And we had a little service, didn't we? Of dedication. Yeah, dedicated um, the window to special service of uh, Coral Even Song last year. But in addition, um, there is a small group of local volunteers who, who come here uh, every Thursday, in fact, and spend Thursday morning doing various small jobs here, here and there. So anything from gardening outside but also small little repairs in turn. When we established the RAG group um, there was within that group a couple of uh, people who I suppose have practical skills. That actually uh, attracted then some other people to step forward um, who, who had skills I'd say were even better. <laughs> um, so the thing in a rural village like this there are a lot of people who have manual skills of one form or another um, and, and know how to do things. So we've managed to sort of galvanise that into a little group. One of the uh, meetings of the, the RAG group, we decided to establish a maintenance log. So we have a, a kind of a, a forward schedule of things we're going to do. I think we also have a good relationship with the diocese in terms of the DAC office. Yes. So when we agree a schedule of works going forward, um, we're able to send that in and to receive some really good advice about um, what particular works need, what level of... Um, approval, whether it's a faculty or whether it's an archdeacon's approval. Um, and that, that ability to be able to, um, to ask for support and advice and get that quite speedily back is really useful. That the PCC is now the PCC for both Cottenham and Rampton. Um, and so there are representatives um, from Rampton who are on Cottenham PCC. And the, the church wardens um, take responsibility um, uh, within their role for the church here too. And so uh, one of the church uh, wardens is a member of the Rampton Action Group and, and Rampton is very much uh, on the agenda of PCC meetings and the annual parochial church meeting too. But I think you know, Rampton Church um, is held you know, with great respect by people who are in Cottenham. It's a beautiful church, not very far away. I think we see it as one church and, and two buildings. And so there are some services that we would hold here because it's right to hold here. Um, 
and we just yeah. want to be able to, to and that's, maximize the use of the church. Yeah, and that's that, and that's lovely because we, 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 at that point you get the benefits of like an influx of yes. um, a, a, a bigger congregation. It just creates a, a you know a lovely atmosphere. Yeah, and, and Cottenham Church has a has a robed choir. Yeah. And so that robed choir will come and support services here. Um, so we, we had some very successful call and even songs, uh, the carol service. Um, so it's good to be able to use the, the skills and the abilities of, of people at uh, Cottenham for the benefit of Rampton. I think the risks are the same for probably any church going forwards in terms of being able to maintain a group of people um, with the skills and the time and the, the commitment to to keep the church um, in a good condition, good condition going forwards. And I think you know, in society, you know, volunteers in any area, um, be it a scouting group or a village hall. And I think you know, we're already beginning to think that if we fast forward ten years, who are the people going to be who are maintaining uh, not just this church but also the church in Cotton? Um, so it's not an issue just for this church. But, but I think as well, if you take something like this on, you have to have an optimistic outlook. We wouldn't have known at the beginning that actually things would have developed in quite the way that they have now, um, you know, with, with the, the maintenance and, and, and all the other things that are going on here. So um, sometimes you just have to leave it to fate. Um, and, and right now, it feels as though um, we're on a bit of an upward trajectory, which is a positive thing. When the church became a festival church, I think there were villagers who thought that the church was closed. And certainly um, I received comments, oh, well, the church is closed in, in Rapton, isn't it? Um, and I think all we can do is keep demonstrating that it's not closed, making sure that we're well, the church is well reflected in on both the website, um, the Facebook pages. There's also a paper newsletter that also goes out by email, I think, as well. Mm, yes. And there's always a slot on, there's always a, a, a section on there for, for the church. Um, so we keep we keep residents up to date with both services and what's happening within the church. Also, the, the door is literally open. So uh, you walk past the church, and a lot of people do with their dogs you know, around here. And, then, and also, uh, we did early on, we did build a new website. I'm not sure how heavily it's used, but we felt we needed some kind of online presence for um, raising funds. Because there are, I mean, I've seen in, in our notice book, uh, people that have come here who have now moved away, a long way away, and, and are happy to come back and leave a little comment in the book. Somehow if we could reach out to them, you know, we're looking for funds. And also um, in the village, I come to most village events that are held um, wearing my dog collar so that they know that they've got a vicar who's interested um, in being in the village and is their vicar. I mean, certainly if churches find themselves in the situation that we found ourselves in, where it's difficult um, to, to recruit church officers and, and, and have a PCC, then it's, it's worth looking at. I think one of the things to think about um, are finances. And certainly um, if you're not having services every week or every fortnight, um, if you're only having services at festivals, then the giving over the year, um, the giving through the plate, um, goes down. And so one of the difficulties that we have is that the, the Ramptons, part of the parish share that Cotton and Rampton pay, there hasn't been enough money coming in through the, the festival services that we hold um, in order to pay that share in full. So Cotton is picking up um, the shortfall. So that, I think that's something to think about um, for a church going forward. Um, where is the, the, full, the full amount of the parish share? How can that be, be raised? Also, I think within a small village, um, all of these amenities, so you have a church, you have a pub, you have a this or that, people do value that. Mm. And it's somehow it's a finding, finding a way to tap into that and, and turn that into either regular giving or, and or just one-off donations. Yeah. We, have had, we have had a few people sort of step forward just with a you know, random one-off donation, which, which, which yeah. have always um, helped. I think people are very happy um, to give to the building because they, they see the beauty and they want um, want to make sure the building is, is well maintained. It's very difficult to uh, almost like fundraise for the parish share yes. um, because people just accept that the vicar is, is there for them and, and don't necessarily think that there's a cost associated with that that has to be met. 
if they're in a position of thinking, is this church at risk of closure, then certainly think about becoming a festival church first. I think the benefit of us being a, a festival church here, it, it has, I think, ignited interest in the church. Mm, and certainly the group of people who form um, the Rampant Action Group and come on Thursday morning weren't involved, weren't all involved in the church, the life of the church prior to that. Um, so it has invigorated. Um, De- definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, do all of that and establish a good committee yeah. right from the beginning. Um, yeah. Pick people who who are active and will, will get on and do things. But make sure it's linked into the PCC. Yes. Because you you, know, you need you need to make sure that you're following um, <laughs> um, <laughs> the rules and regulations around what you do in a building, um, both for uh, to make sure that what we're doing is is absolutely the right thing yes. in terms of the uh, the building, but also to cover ourselves in terms of insurance as well. Mm-hmm.